Coach, the last time we had a chance to hear from you was January 2nd, and you said you were disappointed and that change would be part of moving forward to 2019. So with that being said, what, in your opinion, were the biggest changes made so far this offseason? You know, um, we made some personnel changes, um, things that happen annually in terms of the acquisition and, and of players and players moving on. Same thing from a staff member standpoint, talking about the coaching staff. Uh, we're just beginning to talk about some of the things that that we do in, involving some of the other things, uh, the schematics, if you will, the development of the 2019 schematics, the leaning on the new distribution of our talents um, in an effort to put the best product on the field, but also looking at trends within the game, uh, combating certain elements that are going on in play, uh, the acquisition of, of personnel and some common opponents, um, you know, the, the way that the rules are being, uh, being ruled out and points of emphasis relative to that. Um, we're just beginning to get on the cusp of some of the significant changes that are going to occur. But also, I'm looking at the utilization of technology, whether it's analytics, um, the utilization of technology as a training tool, as a rehabilitation tool, um, how we parcel out our workday even in terms of time spent on the grass in the meeting rooms. Uh, I'm open to all of those things and appropriately so. The team ended its professional relationships with Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell recently. What is your emotional response to losing two guys that you helped draft and also two guys that were very productive on the field? You know, uh, I think it's different. You know, Le'Veon's been gone now for some time. So it's, it, for me, it's, I don't view it as if we are just lost Le'Veon Bell. We, we played without Le'Veon Bell in 2018, so there's less feelings regarding Regarding that, obviously, it's disappointing uh, that you know Antonio Brown moved on and he's no longer a member of us. But at the same time, if you've been in this business any length of time, you understand that you know people come and people go within this thing. Uh, you can waste a lot of time and energy looking back and, and and things of that nature. I'm focused on the guys that are a part of us, the guys that have a desire to be a part of us, and their improvement and contributions for 2019. You already mentioned changes to your coaching staff. I want to start with Terrell Austin. His title is Senior Defensive Assistant Secondary. What exactly does his role entail? You know, essentially he's a secondary coach, but I'm acknowledging that he brings some unique talents to the table as a secondary coach. Uh, he has experience as a coordinator. He's also a guy that's been on the doorstep on some head coaching positions in recent years and it brings that know-how and that preparation. Uh, anticipating using him uh, in terms of some situational things, be it replay and judgment in game uh, to help us in, in a lot of ways because that's something that he's been preparing for uh, in his aspirations to be a head coach. So he has a lot of uh, additional um, talents that could be beneficial to us beyond his secondary expertise and I think it's reflected in his title. Sean Surrett was promoted to your offensive line coach and that seemed to happen very quickly. Was that almost a no-brainer for you? It really was. Um, Sean has grown and developed within our system for a number of years and worked closely uh, alongside uh, Munch in the development of our offensive line. Uh, he's not new to us. Um, it's been fun to watch the maturation process of him as a coach. Uh, over the time spent here, I think all of us are excited about him getting this opportunity and showing what he's capable of as a, as a lead line coach. Eddie Faulkner is now the new running backs coach. Is that somebody that was on your radar or did you get to know him in the pre-drafting of Jalen Samuels? He's somebody that was on our radar and I think the drafting of Jalen uh, and, and, and seeing the overall preparedness of Jalen and, and, and getting a, get a further understanding of his coaching capabilities through, through an through a acquired player I think helped in that. Um, but. He was very impressive through the interview process. His reputation is well deserved. We're excited about what he's going to bring to us. Who will be handling the outside linebackers in 2019? Keith Butler. Um, you know, he's going to coordinate and handle those guys directly. You know, it's become such a hybrid position uh, in today's NFL because we're in sub package so much that those guys work a lot with the defensive line. So I just thought it was important. To, to allow Keith Butler to travel with those guys, to work with them exclusively in outside linebacker play, but to also lead them into a lot of their defensive line work when they'll be working a lot with Carl Dunbar uh, and his group. You guys signed three players in free agency. Dante Moncrief and Steven Nelson had pre-draft visits in their respective drafts with the Steelers. It seems like you guys always go after those guys from the outside that you are familiar with. Is that by coincidence or is that something that you weigh heavily on? 
Certainly, I think we've, when we've already done the research, there's a certain level of comfort about the non-football non aspects of the relationship. Um, who the guy is, his background, things relative to that. Um, and so it's not surprising when we're, when we're delving into free agency that we have a past experience in terms of getting to know these guys or an understanding where they come from, from a draft prep perspective. So coach, what did those two guys bring to your team? You know, um, I think that that remains to be seen. Certainly there are certain expectations because we're doing business with them via free agency, but I don't want to put them in a box. I don't want to, you know, place limits on what they're capable of doing from a contribution standpoint. Specifically, Moncrief has been a guy that's been big play capable uh, since he's been in the league. It's reasonable for, for, for us to expect him to bring those capabilities to the table. Steven Nelson has been a capable starter, both inside and out within Playoff caliber defenses is reasonable for him to, to display that versatility. And it's been awesome to watch the maturation in terms of the position transition for Mark Barron over the course of his career. He came into the league as a top 10 safety and really has evolved into an every situation or all situations linebacker. And so to see that growth and development from afar has been exciting. And so we, we're excited about potentially benefiting from from that maturation process. When I talked to Barron and had a chance to sit down with him recently, he said that it was simply an injury that moved him from safety to linebacker. Does he fit more in that hybrid role in your opinion? I, I think that maybe if he was five years younger, he might have been a linebacker. I think a lot of the guys that come into the game now that look like him are wear 50 numbers. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that, that it's really a reflection of the evolution, uh, uh, the continual evolution of the game. Um, you know, you get some guys that were highly decorated college safeties like him and like Thomas Davis, who was an All-American safety in Georgia, and over the course of their careers, they transitioned into all situations linebackers because of an, an adaption or, or, or an adaptive element that's, that's part of this, this game.